Ladies and gentlemen, I just did a video that talked about the Amera Legion organization and its process, the SATPAC update, and the truth, referencing Sojourner Truth. Now, that video, I paused nothing, but I did put myself on mute because I didn't want my noise in my background to interfere with your listening to this video. It is eight minutes long, so I am going to remove that video and put this one back up. What I'm suggesting is eight minutes from the time I start that program, you will go fast forward, if you've already listened to it, to that point. So eight minutes, fast forward. Try to keep this as short as that one. All right, let's begin. The Amerilegion Legion organization, the Amerilegion Legion process, is designed to help you document your having paid the debt. It's all from the premise of you being the creditor and them accessing your account. As explained at the beginning of the video, that, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and play it, but no, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm, go I'm just going to go ahead and play the beginning of the video. That way you guys can have it as opposed to me just sitting up here doing talking. And then when we get to the eight minute mark, oh, no, as a matter of fact, it's, uh, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and let it play and let them, let him explain to you about Amera Legion. One second, everyone. And I'm going to mute myself again. But this time I will remember to take care of that mute button on the microphone. So one moment, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I did say that I wasn't planning on doing any more videos on this channel or the other until I put videos up on the Eon TV channel. The Eon.TV channel will be up soon. I just have to learn certain software. I don't have time because I'm busy doing motions for people and being interfered with by so many other factors. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to take a brief moment and talk to some of you about Amera Legion because I think many people have gotten a misunderstanding about Amera Legion and I'm disappointed in that. Ladies and gentlemen, the law says that you have a right to challenge a debt once someone claims that you owe a debt. However, what you don't know and what nobody's ever told you that if you challenge a debt, you must have your own accounting. I know. You've often gone into court and you've never produced an accounting. You've never produced, this is what I paid, this is what I've done. And because you haven't done that, you've not overcome the burden that has been placed upon you. You see, the court says that if the other party comes in claiming you owe them a debt, then you now have the burden of proving you don't owe a debt. They don't have to prove you owe the debt. All they got to do is produce a contract, and they do. They produce a deed of trust in most cases. They produce a signed contract where you applied for a loan, but you don't know the law because you've not read it. Go ahead. 12 U.S.C. 411. It says that there must be an application with every loan, so that's why you have to fill out an application. But you don't even know that that's the reason why you must fill out an application. You must apply application. You must apply, that's where the word application comes from, for a loan. Just like you must apply for a driver's license, but you don't understand. That's the contract. The promissory note is not the contract. It's only at to send them to the, pro the promise to pay. There must be an application. Why? Because you are the one who are the beneficiary of the trust account. It's your account. They need access. And you grant them access through the contract. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I know many of you knew this. But what you didn't understand, that there had to be an accounting and there had to be a challenging of the debt. And it has to be documented. That's what Amerilegion is doing for you. 
Amer Legion is not getting rid of your debt. Amer Legion is helping you document your debt. Nobody else is doing that for anybody. Go and look. There is no company doing anything like that for the people. That's what Amer Legion is doing for you. And you think, well, I can do this on my own. No, you can't do it on your own because Amer Legion is taking care of seven different steps. They're even contacting the credit bureaus for you doing the 1099Cs. And they're not charging thousands. Technically, they're giving you a discount. The normal rate is $3,900. I told you when I did it, I paid $3,500, and the individual didn't do all of the things I'm doing. Amer Legion is not offsetting your debt. Once the letter goes to the credit bureaus, then you get to let the credit bureaus know, I need you to remove this. If you fail to remove this, I'm suing you. I'm not suing that company because you can't not report a debt unless it's verified. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts have already documented, and the Mayor of Legion is putting that in their documents, that verification does mean sending me a letter without a signature on it, sending me a letter with a bunch of numbers on it. That's not verification. That's not proof of anything. The courts have already documented that. That's what Amer Legion is doing for people. Thank you for letting me take the time to explain that. I'm about to play this video right here, and I like it, but I'm about to play it. Then we're going to get into the other natures of why I'm doing the video. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Well, kids, well, there's so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt uh, the Negroes of the South and the women of the North all talking about rights. These white men gonna be in a fix pretty soon. <laughs> but what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and, and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helped me in carriages or over mud puddles, or give me any best place. Ain't I a woman? Mm -hmm. Look at me. Look at my arms. I have plowed and planted and, and gathered in the barns, and no man can head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and, and, and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I? Ain't I a woman? Then they, they, they talk about this, this thing in the head. What's this they call it? What's this they call it? Intellect, that's it, honey. Intellect. What's that got to do with women's rights and Negroes' rights? If my cup were whole but a pot, and yours are hold a court. Wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure fool? And then that, that, that man back there in the black, that man back in the black says that women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Mm. Where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. <laughs> now, if the, if the first woman that God ever made was strong enough to turn this world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now, they's asking to do it. <laughs> and you men, you men better let them. Obliged to you. Thank you for letting me speak to you this morning. 
Now old so Jordan ain't got nothing more to say. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the first video and that's where it stopped. So you wouldn't have heard me talking after that. So let me go ahead. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let this go because I don't want to go beyond the minutes of this original one. Ladies and gentlemen, the way things work out is this. And the video, you will go to eight minutes. So the eight minute mark is where you would go. So if you've seen the other video, eight minute mark is where you need to be. Ladies and gentlemen, um, first, what I said about this young lady is that she was correct. That without woman, man would not be here. Wait, hold on. Without man, woman wouldn't be here. There is this hierarchy thing. Now, the Bible does speak about this thing called as the headship principle. That the man is the head of the household, just as Christ is the head of the congregation, he has appointed men in the congregation to run the congregation. There are supposed to be no women preachers. Now, going from door to door, knocking on doors, yes, the scriptures does support that. But as far as teaching the congregation, the Bible does not support that. Why? Well, it explains it, that Adam was created first, then Eve. Does that mean women are less? No. Women are treated with the same respect because... It is said that a man is to treat his wife as his own body. For no man has ever hated his own body, but he cherishes it and loves it and feeds it. Well, if a man loves his wife as himself, like he's supposed to love his neighbor, then his wife is his equal, not his subordinate. So why are so many men treating women as if they're subordinates? You see, a lady like Sojourner Truth, who I didn't even know who Sojourner Truth was. I just heard the name before. Why? Because I listened to NPR. NPR, National Public Radio. When I was on vacation, that's all I listened to is NPR. And Sojourner Truth comes on. And they always talked about the donation. Oh, I hate December, and they're always doing their donation campaigns. But, ladies and gentlemen, Sojourner Truth, I didn't know who she was. As a matter of fact, the strong mind and will to this person, can you imagine her running a corporation today? You talk about a successful corporation. And I actually think that she would lend and tend to take care of the needs of her clients and her customers. Speaking of clients and customers, ladies and gentlemen, what SACOM has done, by the way, that's the truth part of the title. What SACOM has done is SACOM has created these things called SAT packs. Never before created, nobody's ever done anything like it. You will find that I'm often doing things that nobody has ever done before. That's all right. That is my knack in life. I'm not trying to invent the wheel because somebody already did that. I'm not trying to discover gravity because apparently somebody's already done that. I am not trying to prove everything to be right because I don't need to. What I was trying to do is to help my neighbor. You see, at SACOM, when we first started the organization, we asked the question, what was the number one thing people needed? Because that's what we were going to supply. When we got together as a commission initially, we asked, what was the number one thing people needed? Now, at the time, I was talking about gaining control of the securities held in one's minor account, i.e., securities. And then the individual said debt. I told him we didn't want to be another debt company. There are too many of them out there. We don't want to, that's too proliferated. We don't want to be another debt company. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these items and we're going to convert them to securities. As we convert them to securities, we're going to support and back those items with credits. And I set the process in motion by having the individuals who work for the organization, I had them do the research on credits because I couldn't do everything myself and I could not run everything myself. Other people had to have the same knowledge. The two people, well actually the three people I put on it, two of them have actually gone off and started their own company doing the same thing they were doing in our company, just taking the information with them because they want to go their own route. They wanted to charge more. 
ladies and gentlemen, to this day, there are members who want to charge you more, and I say no. Okay, for AmeriLegion, $580 for all the stuff they do, contacting the credit bureaus, doing the 1099s, sending out all the paperwork, doing notary presentment, $580 for that. Just that simple. And that's not even a little of what they're doing. Some people want to rush the process, tell them how to do the process, uh, and they create it, so they need to be quiet. But, ladies and gentlemen, AmeriLegion is providing your proof so that you, when you go to court, you have it outlined. I told you, his name was Stevens. I don't believe he's still alive. Judge Stevens out of the Los Angeles County Superior Court. Just do 2003. Judge Stevens, Los Angeles County Superior Court. Judge Stevens told the entire audience, I don't think an attorney could have done as good of a job as you've done here today. That was Judge Stevens. He's actually a judge I respect it. He was called Your Honor by me. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't call no judge Your Honor. But I respected him because he treated me with respect. He didn't disrespect me. Now, he didn't always rule in my favor. Now, he, he held my feet to the fire, but the reason why I won so many cases in my past is because I've always had documentation. Maxine Waters taught me that documentation is everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing that same understanding to AmeriLegion. They're documenting everything. Well, what SACOM had to do, SACOM had to create the security, and you have that security, a trust, a bond, a contract, uh, opt-out. Uh, disaffirmance of contract document. It's even a DBA in business as notice placed on the public record. It has a government seal. So it's backed by the full faith and credit. Now look, government seal means that the seal is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. Not the document. But as long as that full faith and credit attaches, and when we attach the credits, which come from the government, which are as a result of doing the 1099-Cs. Ladies and gentlemen, those documents can now be converted into a bond. Now, if you look at the QPAC, the QPAC itself is a bond. Go back and look at your QPAC. The QPAC is a bond. All you do is take your tax credits and you back your QPAC with those bonds. Those of you who are part of the Defrauded Homeowners of America, we're going to be doing a video up on this soon. If you were the part of the Defrauded Homeowners of America from 2012 until 2016, because it was cut off in 2016, if you're part of that group, you need to email me, and I will give a special email address at that time. Do not, I apologize, email me at this time, because you will only piss me off. I am letting you know that we will be doing a video you're just going to have to stay tuned for the Defrauded Homeowners of America because you all have quite a few tax credits coming your way. Those who are Defrauded Homeowners of America who were also part of a separate group but still part of the Defrauded Homeowners of America and you've received credits, you have more credits coming your way. I just want you all to pay attention. That's the end of that video, so it looks like I'm carrying on too long, but it's only because I've decided to talk about some other things. Now, back to the sap packs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to get rid of this because I done, um, there it is. That's what I'm looking for, that X right there, because I done gone too far. Now, I just want you all to know that this video will be up on both channels. Uh, okay, nobody asked you about that. Close that. Of course, there are no issues found. Better leave me alone. Sorry, that's Google and their stupidity. Um, we're going to minimize that. And I thought I closed this already. One second, peoples. And this is the actual YouTube video, so I'll just leave that up. What SACOM did at that point was it supplied everyone with a 98 series number. And it gave individuals instructions on how basic instructions to set up a non-interest bearing trust account. With a non-interest bearing account, you don't need a social security number. All you need is your identification and that number from the IRS and your declaration of trust. That's it. 
you can open up a non-interest bearing account. I have already suggested that everybody should be doing all business through the corporation. You will fill out the IRS, you should, my opinion, fill out the IRS 3115 form. That's letting them know I'm changing my accounting method. You shouldn't have to tell anybody you're changing your accounting method, but they don't want to be confused. See, if you're using all kind of different accounting methods, whoo that will drive somebody crazy. So they say, hey, we have a right to know what your accounting is. Okay, so you have to do it the right way, their way. And now that you have everything put in place, uh-oh, now you got the credits that you received. How are you going to handle the credits? These are credits, but they're not documented. Hold on. These credits are not documented on your taxes. Well, the IRS is going to want to charge me. Nope, they're exempt. They are exempt from taxation, and that's exactly how you explain it to the IRS. These credits are exempt from taxation. Well, why are they exempt from taxation? Because these are government obligations. All of these credits come as a result of government obligations. They are not taxable. They were even given to you by a nonprofit organization. Uh-oh. The Eon Foundation is a nonprofit organization, everyone. Let me say it again. The Eon Foundation is a nonprofit organization. Okay? I hope that makes sense. You'll have to do your research. Now, I said in that video at the beginning, I said Section 411 tells you about application. It's actually Section 412. That's what speaks about application. Did the video on collateral. Go back and look at collateral security. It's under Section 412. But you'll see that there has to be an application. But what you all don't know is according to the statute, when you go and look at 401, use Cornell Law to do the research because they have the links to the different sections. When you go to 412, the first thing you find out is Federal Reserve, that they might, with an application, make an application for a loan. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you do an application for a loan. Whenever you do a car loan, a student loan, um, or a home loan, you always fill out an application. No, 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 you don't understand. You're not applying to them. <laughs> God, you're not applying to them for their help. No, no, no. You're giving them authorization to access your account. The accounts were created as a result of the March 9, 1933 Act, when they took gold out of the system, when Congress said all of their notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances were going to be construed as government obligation. That's why they had to give you a Social Security number. That was the whole process. To prove you got an account with the Federal Reserve, go back and look at Section 412. You get to apply, if you do it right, you get to apply for a loan. And there's a process for doing it. Go back and look at Section 412. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look up Federal Reserve, it'll take you to the definition for Federal Reserve, which we'll talk about banks, membered banks, and it'll list all those other things under Federal Reserve. It says to find this distinct re uh, definition, go to 412, or no, 212A. Nobody wants to go to 212A because it doesn't do anything but tell you you got to go to 212. Okay, so uh, you go to 212 without the A, and you find that a bank is also considered... <laughs> Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank, or Membered Bank. Interesting. But remember, the Presidential Proclamation 2039 said that you are a banking institution. You are a bank. You give out loans to anybody? Have you ever lent money to anyone? Well, that's all it requires is that you give out loans. Have you ever made a deposit? Oh, yeah, I just came out of the bathroom making a deposit. Hoo-wee, that was a huge deposit. Okay, well, fine. Fine, all right, you can use that as the term that you make deposits. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't signify what type of deposits. It just says making a deposit, any type of deposit, depositing paper into a court, any type of deposit makes you a banking institution. There'll be a lot of people out there saying, that's not what Congress meant. I don't care what Congress meant. That's what they said. They should never have taken the gold. See, they don't get to change the terms of the contract. Now, they have been changing the terms of the contract, but Section 412 is the March 9, 1933 Act and the Amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. That's what Section 412 is. 
Also 358, 359, I think 348, 349, 350. All of those are the very ones that are in Section 412. That's the Emergency Banking Relief Act and its amendments to the present day, people. That shows you that we're still under the March 9, 1933 Act. Shh, don't tell nobody. But that also shows you how to get a loan from the banks without going to the banks because you can get it directly from the Federal Reserve if you follow their procedures. It's right there in Section 412. And the subsections associated with 412. Now, there's more to it, but you have to do your research. I'm not going to give you everything because, again, I'm doing all the work and there is no body compensating me. Now, I have a uh, consult that someone has just paid for, that individual will get that information. Now, I'm not here to help you all with this stuff. I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I'm here to make sure that I give the information to the people when they ask for it. Am I saying you have to pay for it? No. But I'm saying I'm not going to give it all out at one time because that's the problem. Every time I give people information, they don't follow through with it. Every time I give people information, they don't follow through with it. Every time I give people inf oh, did I say it already? They don't follow through with it. I keep hearing, well, I didn't do that because, really? So you came to me for my advice, and then when I gave it to you, you ignored it? Well, I ain't going to do what you told me to do. You better believe you don't, but you don't get to talk to me no more after that. I ain't got time for people like you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Sojourner Truth talked about women, and she talked about how important women were to our society and all the things women have done in our society. Please understand, most of my demographics, as far as my viewers, are women, which is why they get me. Okay? So, respect for women? Most definitely, I have respect for women. I don't have any respect for a woman who wants to be a man, whether through a sex change operation or through conduct. Sorry. Nor do I have any respect for a man who wants to be a woman. Sorry, I, I've been listening to, I started, I went back and listened to the TV series called Soap. And I'm watching the whole series from beginning to end. Because I liked soap as a kid, but I didn't realize that they were pushing the so-called gay agenda on people. Making it funny. Somebody said that when they put it in the uh, All in the Family, Archie Bunker, when they put it in that series with uh, Rob Reiner, when they did that with him and had him being called meathead and gay and all of that stuff, even though in the show he's not gay, he was just being called that, and they made jokes about it to make it more acceptable. It is a psychological procedure that can be done to make things more appeasing to people. They've been doing it for centuries. Remember, everybody used to hate this and they used to hate that, and all of a sudden they love it now. They couldn't stand this, they couldn't stand it, all of a sudden they love it now. All of a sudden it's acceptable. They started talking about choice. Ladies and gentlemen, this ain't got nothing to do with choice. That's the matrix. This has nothing to do with choice. Well, either way, as I said, I don't have much respect for certain things. It has nothing to do with a religion or a religious view. It has everything to do with that's just the way it is. That there is no... Oh, he's not open. You better believe I'm not open. My store is closed. I ain't doing no new business. Of course I wouldn't be open to any suggestions against the God that I serve. Must be out of your mind. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone 10 minutes over what I wanted to do. What I was trying to explain is that SACOM has given people credits. Now they need to find out how to create a bond and incorporate in the language of the bond that the credits are the collateral for the bond. The same as in your deed of trust, you have the house is the collateral for the deed of trust, the security. So securitize a bond by creating your bond. You can make your SAP pack the bond if you choose to, or you can create a separate bond. How do you create a bond? Well. Literally, just take an hour style money order, put it on a single bond page. You can you can download bond templates and then add the other language for a bond. Download a sample copy of a bond 
and write it and put the language in that the credits that are issued by the federal government are that which support this bond as collateral security. Just that simple. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you guys one more thing. And don't say I ain't never did nothing for y'all because I told y'all last year for those people who helped me, and I'm still doing it, for those people who helped me, I said I would continue to give you information to help you. So when you look at Section 412, it kindly tells you about making a deposit with the Federal Reserve for a loan. So you got that, right? So when you go to the Federal Reserve to make that deposit, go back and reread that. It says that your, supposit, your deposit, I was going to say suppository, no I wasn't, your deposit, that is your note draft bill of exchange, is your collateral security, it says that you must deposit collateral into the Federal Reserve. Go back and look at it. Ah, once you figure out how to do that, I ain't going to tell you. Then you can start applying for loans according to their policies and procedures. So focus on 412. Let that be your main focus. Remember, that is the March 9, 1933 Act. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, this was for you. I hope this is beneficial. Have a good day, everyone.